What's going on guys? This is Von Alec Puma, back with another Borderlands 2 video, and today I thought it could be fun to talk about why you should buy and play Borderlands 2 in 2018 and beyond. Now before we start, I suppose I should say that Borderlands 2 isn't necessarily for everyone, as some don't like loot-based RPG shooters. That said, if you are somebody that likes FPS and or RPG games, and you've yet to have played or you previously played but didn't finish playing Borderlands 2, then this video will be for you. But enough disclaimers, let's talk about why Borderlands 2 is a game you should definitely pick up and play if you haven't already. Out of all of the major AAA looter shooters on the market that I've played, which include the likes of Destiny along with a little bit of The Division and Warframe, I feel pretty comfortable and confident in saying that Borderlands 2 is still the best one after all of these years. Now, this isn't to say that any of these other games aren't fun to play and that they don't have redeeming aspects when compared to Borderlands 2. After all, I think I prefer Destiny 1 and 2's light system over Borderlands 2's over power levels. But at the end of the day, I think Borderlands 2 is ultimately a much better game when compared to the likes of Destiny and The Division in particular. There are a number of different reasons for why this is, but I think it mainly just comes down to an overall better focus on quality story, gameplay, and looting elements. Not to mention that Borderlands 2 gets all three of these things right, while its competitors only really get some of these things right, and potentially manage to screw up others. As a great example, Borderlands 2 has a fairly well-written, interesting, and easy story to follow when compared to the likes of either The Division or Destiny, which are fairly bland in comparison. Not to mention that Handsome Jack in particular is a far more memorable villain compared to the main villains from the other two games, like Oryx or Gaul from the Destiny franchise, or Charles Bliss from The Division. This also even extends to Borderlands 2's other characters, as NPCs like Claptrap, Moxie, and Scooter are far more memorable than, say, Fei Lao from The Division, and maybe even Cade 6 from Destiny. Then again, I do have to admit that Cade 6 is pretty cool, but I do think that someone like Marcus from the Borderlands series is far more memorable than Banshee 44 from Destiny, and characters like Lilith, Mordecai, and Brick are far more memorable than Zavala or Ikora. Another major reason I think that Borderlands 2 is better than Destiny or The Division comes down to loot, as I think it's fair to say that Borderlands 2's loot is just a lot more interesting. Borderlands 2 consists of guns that can be thrown at enemies and then explode. It has guns that can shoot explosive gyrojet-like projectiles. It has weapons like the Sandhawk, which looks like you're shooting a bird out of your gun. And you've even got things like the Norfleet, which is a lot like the original Doom's BFG-9000. Now, to be fair, I suppose the Division is supposed to be more grounded in the real world, and thus you're not going to have crazy bird projectile weapons like you might see in Borderlands 2. However, I think in the case of both the Division and Destiny, the quality of the loot is held back by having to maintain proper balance between PvP and PvE. So, you're not going to get something crazy and interesting like the Norfleet rocket launcher or a bird projectile firing Sandhawk, as either of these could be too powerful in a PvP setting. Ultimately, I think a major reason you should pick up Borderlands 2 is because it's probably the best, if not one of the best, looter shooter type games that you can get on the market right now. Despite its age, it really got a lot of things right that its successors just didn't. Something else that I think helps Borderlands 2's case is that it's a single-player game first with co-op multiplayer added rather than a semi-persistent mmo light multiplayer game with missions like Destiny and The Division. The great part about this design is that Borderlands 2 is a game that you could potentially play through entirely by yourself, which is something that can't be said of Destiny 1 or 2, which automatically requires you to team up with other players to complete strikes, raids, and other traditionally multiplayer activities. The other advantage of designing a game as a single-player game first is that the player isn't locked out of any content that they paid for. While that's not necessarily the developer's fault, as it's Sony and Microsoft that charge for online play, I remember it being incredibly frustrating to find out that I couldn't experience Destiny 1 Strikes just because I didn't pay for PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold. The fact that Borderlands 2 is a single-player oriented game with awesome co-op multiplayer capabilities makes the game far more accessible as you don't have to have a dedicated group of people to play Borderlands 2 with. 
Granted, having friends or randoms to play with can make the Borderlands 2 experience better, but the fact that you can go alone if you want to is highly desirable and makes the game worth picking up if you're more into single player slash PvE co-op type experiences. Another reason I think Borderlands 2 is worth picking up is due to its replayability and its vast amount of content in the vanilla game and its DLC. While I suppose Borderlands 2 isn't totally unique in this sense, as other looter shooters like Destiny and The Division have received a lot of updates and have a fair amount of replayability to them, Borderlands 2 in my mind has the advantage. As an example, Destiny 1 and 2 feature three playable classes, while Borderlands 2 has six. Thus, if you want to go back and replay through the game with a new character or class, you could potentially do this more times in Borderlands 2. Plus, there's quite a bit of variety within Borderlands 2's character classes, as a character like Maya can be played as either a healer or a crowd control specialist, while Zero can focus on either snipers or go full melee. As far as DLC or post-launch content is concerned, I think it's pretty well known that the vast majority of Borderlands 2's are of high quality. Granted, some of the pearlescent weapons sucked that got added with the first level cap DLC, However, each of the four campaign DLCs, Digistruct Peak, and even some of the Headhunter packs are all pretty good. So, if you're someone that beats the main game and you find that you're looking for more, Borderlands 2 will definitely offer the replayability and the significant amount of extra DLC and add-ons that you may be looking for. Perhaps the biggest and possibly best reason to get into Borderlands 2 in 2018, though, is the community. While I can't speak for the console versions of Borderlands 2, the PC version of Borderlands 2 has really maintained its player base quite well over the years. According to Steam charts, Borderlands 2 usually hovers around 5 to 9,000 players concurrently each month, with peak player counts hitting about 10 to 12,000. This is pretty impressive for what is essentially a six-year-old game, and is especially impressive when compared to The Division, which tends to vary a lot more and be noticeably lower on average. You also have to keep in mind that these player counts for Borderlands 2 are despite the fact that the game hasn't had a new piece of DLC or a major update come out since October 2015, where The Division is updated fairly regularly. With that in mind, it's actually kind of impressive that Borderlands 2 has been able to maintain its player base that well, since Borderlands 2 is now 6 years old, while The Division is just 2 years old. Now, while I do think it's likely that The Divisions, as well as Destiny 2's community, are definitely larger on console, and potentially even larger when everything's added together, you have to keep in mind that Borderlands 2 is 6 years old and was originally released on the previous generation of consoles. The fact that it's maintained this much of a player base well into 2018 and beyond is nothing short of incredible. Beyond player counts though, the Borderlands 2 community is still relatively active on YouTube and Twitch and over the past year or so, community members have been working on the unofficial community patch, which is an unofficial update slash mod for Borderlands 2's PC version that rebalances a lot of the weapons, it even adds some new weapons, and it changes up some of the loot pools and overall just rebalances the game. Granted, this is nothing on the level that you can achieve in a game like Fallout 4 or Skyrim, but what the community patch team has been able to accomplish via text scripts is amazing and is a testament to people's love of Borderlands 2. So what I think we can say is that the Borderlands 2 community has had a lot of longevity, and if you are concerned about finding people to play with, you shouldn't be because there are still a lot of people playing, and there are still a lot of people that really love the game, and they're creating new mods and totally new content for it. This brings us to the final thing that I'd like to talk about, and that is price. While prices are subject to change, I think it's worth pointing out that you should pick up Borderlands 2 because it's pretty cheap and tends to go on sale fairly regularly. If you primarily game on the PC, then you'll be happy to know that Borderlands 2 goes on sale during virtually every Steam sale, and provided you just get the base game, Borderlands 2 usually goes on sale for 5 US dollars, while the Game of the Year edition goes for about 879. Now, it's worth mentioning that this doesn't include all the DLC, as the second Ultimate Vault Hunter mode upgrade and some of the Headhunter packs will still have to be purchased. 
But it's worth pointing out that these usually go on sale at significant discounts as well, meaning that you should easily be able to get all of Borderlands 2 for well under $20. As for console players, physical copies of the Handsome Collection should run you about 20 to 30 bucks and include Borderlands 2 with all of its DLC, along with Borderlands the pre-sequel and all of its DLC. Alternatively, if you own an Xbox One and you have access to an Xbox 360 version of Borderlands 2, you can play that version on your console thanks to backwards compatibility. Now, while I would recommend the Handsome Collection over this method, because you get all of the DLC and you're getting a better frame rate, the base 360 version can be had for pretty cheap and is typically sold at GameStop for like 3 bucks. If you do decide to go that route and you decide that you're really into Borderlands 2, you can always upgrade to the Handsome Collection later and your saves should be able to transfer over. Alternatively, and if you still have your PS3, you can always just buy Borderlands 2 for the PS3 and then transfer your save data over to the PS4 once you finally get the Handsome Collection. So ultimately, I think we could say that Borderlands 2 is pretty easy to get into simply because of the price. Because if you just have like $5 laying around, then you can play Borderlands 2. At the end of the day, guys, I would highly recommend you pick up Borderlands 2 and play it if you have not yet done so. It's a great game that runs well on old and new hardware, you could spend hundreds of hours in it, and it can be had for pretty cheap. Plus, if you're someone that started on Destiny or The Division and you find that you like that style of game, then Borderlands 2 is definitely going to be right up your alley. Otherwise, guys, thank you all for watching, and I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.